What's up, y'all? In this video, we're gonna show you exactly how to set up an RV at a campground if you're a first-time camper. Let's get into it, we'll walk around, and I'll show you everything you gotta do from the moment you get in to the moment your feet touch ground at the gorgeous campground. Let's go. All right, guys, so the first thing is when you pull into your campground, usually you wanna to try to come in before quiet hours at the end of the night. If you do come in in the evening, try to turn your headlights off, realize people are sleeping. The next thing that you need to do is just make sure that your RV is gonna be lined up with your power, water, and sewage if they do happen to have that, which they do here. So I already pulled my hose out over here. This is just a 30 amp hose. All you gotta do is plug this guy in over here flip your 30 amp breaker on, make sure it's on, otherwise you won't have any power. And then you're gonna plug this thing in. It's a really complicated process to get power to the RV, I know. We got power to the RV now. So now that we have power, the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is rig up our water. A couple things that I have acquired for water. The first is a water pressure regulator. This is really important because some campgrounds do not regulate the water. So I watched some YouTube videos. They told me to get one of these in a filter, and that's what I did. With the water, it's real simple, guys. If you've never hooked up a hose, I honestly wonder what you've been doing in your life. Sometimes you need to use a wrench on these, but I'm really strong, so I don't need to worry about that. And then we're just gonna plug in this other hose here to our water line. Now, this RV does have about, I think, a 12-gallon fresh water tank aboard. So if you are on the road, you're boondocking, you're somewhere that you don't have attachment to water, you can always fill the tanks and just run off that for a couple days. We're now officially hooked up to water. We got our power and boom, we can shower tonight. What we're gonna do now is I have two slides on this RV. We gotta put them out in order for my rear slide to come out. I found this incredible bike rack through Yakima that happens to have a swing arm on it. So all I need to do Undo this, pop it out, swing it over to the side. Now, since we're gonna be here for a couple days, I do have one other thing that I usually attach, and that's this guy here. And if I ever do need to access anything in here, right now we got a spare paddle board, as well as the inflatable hot tub. All I need to do is pop this pin out. This actually turns around, boom, now you can access this. There's a ton of other extensions here. You can get a little camping grill, you can get two of these boxes, whatever. I highly recommend checking it out. All right, guys, and there's one other thing that you're gonna need to do if you're gonna be at the campground for a while, and that is set up your hose to drain the brown tank. It's everyone's favorite hose. It smells great. Essentially, what you're gonna find at every campground is a plug like this. This is where all your waste is gonna go. You wanna make sure it goes in there and nowhere else. <laughs> so what I'm going to do first is attach this guy on this end, extend my hose, and then you have a valve down here that you're gonna end up turning and hooking up to that. If this happens to be for some reason higher, they make little ramps that you can use. I actually have one, I'm not gonna set it up right now. But all you have to do if you do need to drain the tanks is you got two levers. One's gonna be for the actual brown tank, one will be for your gray tank, which is your shower water, dish water, all that stuff. So first I'm gonna pull this. And then once that kind of gets towards the end, the pressure starts to go down, what I'm actually gonna do is open the gray tank. Because what that will do is use all the shower water and sink water to rinse all the other gross water out of your line and make your life a little bit easier. So now that this is almost done, I'm just gonna open this guy up. Usually for myself, I can go anywhere from a week to 10 days before I need to worry about anything as far as the tanks are concerned with that. So I'm gonna close these guys back up, close up my bay back here. And now we're gonna go show you how we're gonna set up the inside, put these slides out and do all the other fun stuff. I happen to just travel with, you know, my own grass. If you don't have a good turf guy, just give me a call, I'll hook you up. So I'm just gonna lay this guy down. I love the turf because it really captures all the dirt I need. There's one thing we need to do before we actually start popping out the slides on the inside. We actually got automatic leveling jack slash stabilizers installed in the RV. So all I need to do is press one button and this thing will come completely level. It used to take me 30 to 45 minutes sometimes, depending on the campsite. Some campsites were very flat, but sometimes you have to use leveling blocks and wedges to get the RV level so you're not like sleeping on a tilt. And that's also really bad for the RV itself. The fridge, your doors, a bunch of things can get messed up if you're consistently unlevel. So all I gotta do is turn it on. It's gonna do some of this thing going around. And once that is done, there we go. It's telling you we're leaning a little forward. I'm gonna hit the auto level button. So what happens now is there's basically four hydraulic jacks under the RV. And as you can see, the two rear ones are coming down first. 
they'll make contact first and start to try to level things out. But as you see, they're coming down now. Now watch this baby and gonna. Now we're cruising. I know, I know this doesn't seem that exciting, guys, but when you did this for a long time by yourself, you gotta pull in, pull out, pull in, pull out, put more blocks down, do this, do that. If you're an experienced RVer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This was a game changer. It's just, it just does it all for you. All right, so now the RV is level. Let's go inside. This is kind of what it looks like all broken down. This slide is all the way in. This is gonna go out about three, four feet. And then you have a second slide here in the rear. This bed's actually a Murphy bed. It folds up, the slide comes in. But the reason I actually loved this RV compared to some of the other 24 foot C-classes is it feels like there's two rooms. This is my living quarters. This is my main office. But overall, this is what it looks like when you are on the road, on the go. So you do have a dial pad that shows you pretty much everything in relation to your tanks. You got your fresh water, your gray water, black, and your liquid propane. Usually the gray and black sensors break. So we just drain those they're empty, but the sensors are showing they're full. So it's just something to note if you do rent an RV and it says the tanks are full, just reach out to the owner and say, hey, are your sensors still working or is there something actually going on and that tank is full? So you got everything in relation to here. You can turn your tank heaters on when it gets too cold. You can see your battery levels. You also can set different settings for your generator. So let's say my battery got below a certain voltage, my generator can automatically kick on. You have your full light settings that you can turn everything on and off. You have your fan, heat runs off propane. Then you have your slides and other settings. So the first thing I'm gonna do is press the extension button on the Danette slide here, and you wanna hold the button until it is all the way completely done. So a big thing, see I'm still holding the button. You want to hold it until the slides are all the way out, otherwise you can cause an imbalance in your slides and then they'll get off track. Your slide won't close when you need it to. It's a nightmare, do not do that. But as you can see, look, this opened up this space tremendously bigger. There's so much room for activities now. I can do whatever I want. Huge things that I didn't mention before. You always need to make sure none of your drawers flew open before you start to put your slides back. Nothing fell off the counters behind the slides. You're gonna start to hear cracking. These things are powerful. They will break whatever gets trapped there. So I'm gonna do my checks. Looking good, drawers are in, clear on that side. Now we're gonna go extend and hold it down the same way all the way through. All right, so as you guys can see, this is kind of what the rear of the RV is like with the bed up. Sure, you can fold it up during the day, work back here, do whatever you need. You got plenty of storage in these drawers. You got storage underneath. You got a place to just throw a lot of crap on the side. Plus you have your two closets here. So you can hang stuff in here, and then just pop the bed down. Just a little, little bungee here, this little bungee here. This guy pops down. And then on the side here, you have a shower. You got a full-size bathroom over here. And then overall, if you guys need, what I'll do next is, here's my little shades. Slides in. Use your uh, rear view sunblocks to do that. And then this can go around your mirror. And then for the door panels, you also have these mats. So these actually have magnets built in. You guys can kind of see them. What you want to do is open the door, attach this to the door frame so that it sticks, and then you can close the door with it in it. Lay it on the window, and you see it just kind of like holds there with the magnets. And then I'm going to close it. So these guys both store around. This is just storage at the moment, but I'm also going to pop this up on this side. Each and every window also opens up and you do have multiple roof vents. You have screens for the bugs, which is amazing. You have a screen door here, which will keep all the bugs out. Screens on all these windows. You got these vents up top that you can turn open and this will actually kick the fan on. There's a little dome, so even if you're driving, you can have this fan on and this will pump air through the windows. Like you're just getting really good airflow throughout the vehicle. Obviously, if you need to, you can use the AC in summer. So the other thing I'm gonna show you guys is the new battery that we got set up. So once we brought it into the shop to get those stabilizers done, I also got a new lithium battery setup and it works amazing. We have one solar panel up top, which will help charge the battery as we go. I plan to get a couple more and then we can run off literally no electric we can have full Wi-Fi, 
full everything we need. All right, guys, so now that we are set up, the only thing left to do is just head out and go shoot. So we're gonna head down to the lake for sunset. It looks freaking incredible right now. Come on with us and we'll go show you everything that this property has to offer.